Hi, my name is Dr. John DeYard and welcome to LifeSpa.com where we prove ancient medical wisdom with modern science. And today I want to talk about the global food shortage crisis. You know, the science tells us that um, by the year 2050, we're going to have about 9.7 billion people to feed on this planet. Today we have about 7.5 billion. So in another 32 growing cycles, we are going to need about a 70% increased yield from our farmers to feed an excess, an extra 2.2 billion people. Now this has been a problem that we've known has been coming for many, many years. In fact, GMO foods, genetically modified foods, were really touted as the solution. The only way for us to actually feed this many people was to genetically modify our food. Well, in a very, very large study, the most comprehensive to date, actually found out that GMO foods actually do not extend the yields of our food in any significant manner. That GMO foods will not be the answer to our food crisis problem. Now GMO foods have become cheaper for farmers, they need less pesticides and so on, so they're selling it now not as the thing that's going to save the world, they're selling it as something that's in fact cheaper. Most of the, the biotech companies have shifted their gears away from GMO foods because it's really not the solution to microbes, soil microbes. They've now identified and collected data on over 500,000 soil microbes, all of which have different roles to play. It's incredibly complex. We have only mapped out with that 500,000 microbes, 1% of the soil microbiome. This is a very small amount of information that we have, and we're now beginning to manipulate the microbiome by wrapping microbes around seeds. And they've been doing this now for three to four years. And the only thing they've come up with is to wrap one new product that they're wrapping corn seeds with certain microbes. And the result is an increased yield of three bushels of corn per acre. This is not going to deliver an extra 70% yield that we need to feed the extra 2.2 billion that we're going to need in the next 32 growing cycles on this planet. Not to mention the risks involved. Microbes are incredibly unique. One microbe could be really great for beets, but the same microbe could kill asparagus. Uh, a microbe could be really great for one aspect of uh, a plant's health, but it could be deadly for another. Microbes could be deadly for us, but good for tomatoes. It's, these microbes are not here as good microbes and bad microbes. They're all microbes and they're fighting for their own survival. And if we provide something for them to allow them to, to survive, we call them good. But if we don't provide something that's allowing them to survive and they do things that aren't good for us to allow them to survive, we call them bad. That same so-called bad microbe may do wonderful things for corn or for beets or for asparagus. It's incredibly complex. Microbes can pump, pump out caffeine, nicotine, tannins, poison, over 150 chemicals they can pump out to defend themselves. We know so little about this, and we've only mapped out 1% of the microbes in the soil, and yet we're already starting to put out products to help increase the yield to save the world. The elephant in the room here is something that is so amazing to me, that the food to feed the extra 2.2 billion people on this planet is already here. We're already producing it. It's found in the waste that we have on this planet. We throw out enough food every year to feed an extra 3.8 billion people a year. We only need to feed 2.2. That gives us an extra 1.2 billion food, enough food to feed an extra 1.2 billion people a year. It seems so logical to me to spend, instead of spending millions and billions of dollars and having the government fund millions and billions of dollars to these biotech companies who are really just, I mean, they're brilliant people, 
but clearly are in the infancy of understanding what the soil microbiome or phytobiome is what it's called, is really all about. And here we go again, you know, starting like we did with the GMO thing. Nobody really knew the impact. We'll figure that out as we go. And here we go. While we have the food already, can't we do, and there are initiatives being started to start to figure out ways to take the food that we eat. Lots of the food isn't bad. Lots of the food is just not the right size to fit in the box that it can be shipped. The bananas are too small. The apples are too small. Well, maybe someone needs to come up with, a, with a, you know, the, the small sort of puny food chain that sells this food at a discount, but it gets it into the hands of people that we need to feed on this planet because we have people starving today. It's amazing to me how our capitalistic system is driving profits when, you know, for, to, to solve the world's food crisis problem when we already have the food today. Instead of manipulating maybe the last frontier, if we screw up the soil microbes, which are the ones that end up in our gut that make up our microbiome, make up 90% of our cells, where do we go from there? It's a dangerous road to hoe, but we keep rowing it because we think or it's going to deliver huge profits. I think we started to think more globally and how we can all work together to take the waste that we have. And the waste is not just in America, it's all over the world. And in the article I showed you with this video at lifespot.com, you can read where the waste is. It's not just here, it's in Africa, it's in Europe, it's in Central America, it's everywhere. And we need to figure out a way. And we have 32 years left to figure that out. I think if we put our minds to it, we can do it. So please check out the article associated with this video, help us all solve the world's problems with uh, by Maybe it's as simple as our mom and dad's once you told us when we were kids, clean your plate. Thanks for listening. I'm Dr. John Dior. Hi, did you like this video? Do you like our content here at Life Spa? You can subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash John right here and get this valuable content every week in your inbox. This recording is brought to you by Life Spa, where ancient Ayurvedic wisdom meets modern science. Get access to free health video newsletters by Dr. John at LifeSpa.com. These statements have not been evaluated by the FDA. These products are not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease.